welcome to today's session on custom clearance my respected participants from across the country on behalf of indian institute of foreign trade and director general of foreign trade dgft office i welcome to to this sessions on the under nirayat bandhu schemes dear friends today we shall discuss how goods are clear whether they are ex imported into india or whether they are exported out of india dear friends we know that there is a body created by law this body is known as customs in case of india it is indian customs which regulate and which you say uh, 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 which takes the legal framework into considerations which is which that what procedure is to be followed for export clearance and also for import clearance my dear friends customs is a custodian of cargo and any cargo which comes into india must be appraised assessed and must be cleared by customs before it is clear for 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 an importer similar fashion any cargo which has to go out of india must be appraised must be assessed and compliance with which foreign trade policy and various other rules and regulations must be maintained dear friends this session is aimed to equip you to understand the various nuances which are involved in clearance of cargo which is coming into india and going out of india and wherein our whole efforts will be to understand it that and understand it in a fashion that how uh, by using edi uh, network which is a ice gate network which has been created by indian customs how goods are cleared what are the documents and uh, documents involved what is the various stages of of custom clearance how documents are assessed what are the precautions which an exporter and importer or his appointed custom broker has to take in order to clear his cargo and above all we will try to understand that what kind of duties are levied and what are the custom clear, custom clearance requirements ccr what are the custom clearance requirement which which various preventive measures and various other regulatory measures which various acts and legislations provide as a legal framework for indian customs to abide to so my, our efforts in the whole session should be to understand both export cargo as well as import cargo starting from filing of bill of entry to final assessment of bill of entry and payment of duty out of charge order by using electronic means in a edi framework similar fashion when goods are exported out of india a shipping bill has to be filed by Indi by an exporter and goods are assessed appraised subsequently goods are registered for uh, for export clearance and dear friends finally a order of let export order is given so as to allow you allow your goods to be loaded on a vessel which will take them to a final destination in addition to that our focus will also be to understand various processing of various licenses uh, which are issued by office of dgft which are processed by indian customs which may be related to various kind of duty credit scripts and dear friends in addition to that various duty neutralization schemes like advance authorization and epcg and uh, duty free import authorization so how those licenses are processed what is the mechanism under which the clearance uh, take place Uh, both for export and import cargo so with these words i request all of you to join us in technical session dear friends so let us start our technical sessions and try to understand the various aspects of custom clearance my dear friends first of all we must open on google a website cbic.gov.in and when you open this this is a kind of screenshot which will come before you and if you see in the blue color here you will find custom duty calculator may i request each one of you to please click, click here on custom duty calculator this will provide you an important link about various duties which one has to calculate and dear friends in addition to that we shall also try to understand the various stages which are involved in custom clearance and uh, one should open a, a database called icegate.gov.in where we can electronically file our either shipping bill or bill of entry let us first start our flow chart for our import clearance so an importer and on on behalf of an importer a custom house agent and now it is known as a custom broker a custom broker on behalf of an importer go to service center so what is a service center service center is nothing but ice gate at every custom house there is a specific room being provided where uh, there are certain terminal kiosks which are installed by indian customs 
or by the uh, by, by the one which own that particular icd facility or port facility uh, by the owners of th that particular own, uh, port facility so on the in the service center one will open electronically a system called icegate.gov.in where they will file the person will file a document known as bill of entry very very important document bill of entry section 46 subsection 2 of the indian customs act 1962 specify that importer of the cargo should file thereof a entry a bill of entry to proper officers of customs either for home consumption or for warehousing dear friends the section say two type of bill of entry either for home consumption or for warehousing but there is a third type of bill of entry which we will discuss subsequently so when your cargo come when you import your cargo an importer has to file a bill of entry either for home consumption or for warehousing keeping in mind if they want to immediately clear the cargo it will be bill of entry for home consumption sometime we buy the cargo in bulk because we buy when supplies are available at a lowest possible uh, price when there is a supply glut in the market we buy in bulk in order to reduce our logistic cost we buy at a cycle where the prices of the commodities or a particular items are at the at the lower side so in order to make our benefits or our economic gains more we try to buy in bulk there are certain commodities which are traded in bulk for example coal pulses and in addition to that crude oil and these are the commodities which has a tendency to get traded in bulk so we buy in bulk when we buy in bulk we will sell it in phases and we want to ensure deferment of duties which we have to pay we want to deferment defer the payment of duties uh, for a specific period which is one year as of now and uh, this is a two type of bill of entry this this system then will match our bill of entry with ice with ice gate uh, when in any vessels come from abroad as we discussed that uh, it file igm so a import journal manifest so any vessel which enters the territorial water of india should file a import general manifest section 30 of the customs act say about the uh, it specify about the delivery of import manifest and nothing can be unloaded from a vessel unless a entry inward granted by indian customs so a vessel come vessel must file online on ice gate on ice gate edi system to indian customs a document known as a import general manifest which which has a detail about vessel about the make of vessel about gross registered tonnage net registered tonnage what kind of cargo it is bringing in who are the people on board captain their nationalities what are the last three ports they have touched in and what kind of specific you say other cargo other than the traded cargo the cargo on board they have so these kind of details are required which are filed to indian customs which provide also detail about the cargo which they have to unload at destination port um, which may be any port of india and uh, then bill of entry system match the bill of entry with that of uh, ice gate and if system accept now this is a system generated because electronic clearance in, is governed by certain protocols of system so it's a system driven process if system accept the details of two data set one filed by igm one filed by bill of entry matches it will be a uh, system will accept it check checklist will be generated otherwise the error will come now error come because a variety of region for example there is a change in port there is a change in nature of cargo there is a change in consignee a buyer has changed because of sale on high seas so variety of seven eight regions because of which sometime data set does not match but usually data will match and if it match you an importer has to file the documents in international trade we do not deal in goods we deal in documents so documents are commercial invoice packing list bill of lading which are supplied to him by an exporter exporter of cargo from abroad through proper banking channels so importer go pay or sign an acceptance under d or dp transaction or lc transaction take the custody of document because in foreign trade documents are sole of foreign trade so he submit the document submission so we reach to submission and then file goes to assistant commissioner of customs for assigning somebody approving somebody for the purpose of appraising a bill of entry if cargo keep on lying for more than 30 day cargo is usually forfeited by indian customs even in case of perishable cargo customs may take this decision even prior to 30 day so assistant commissioner of customs will approve the file which will go to appraising officer who take 
four very important decision which is noting a bill of entry this is number one to classify the cargo dear friends there is a nomenclature we have discussed in our previous sessions that how cargo is classified uh, when we have attend, uh, taken our sessions on ITCHS code in previous sessions we have understood there is a in India there is a eight digit nomenclature uh, which is followed by various agencies in, including DGFT customs uh, GST councils and even uh, uh, directorate of duty drawback dear friends this nomenclature is unique to India it so harmonization has been done up to six digits so our nomenclature may vary Indian custom officer will try to understand where exactly cargo is it should be classified so as to safeguard the revenue interest of government of India and uh, to ensure that the various rules and regulations which are framed by uh, Parliament of India are adhered to or are complied to classification sometime maybe the, the importer may sometime try to mis misclassify the cargo so as to avoid the payment of higher rate of duty or various kind of authorization and licenses which is lacking in order to bypass that it's a duty of the custom to properly classify the cargo so it's a first step and uh, as we have discussed earlier that various countries follow various kind of nomenclature one should be clear for example, in the United States of America, there is a 10 digit nomenclature, China 10 digit nomenclature, Japan 9 digit nomenclature. In India, it is 8 digit nomenclature. So, custom will try to understand based on harmonization at 6 digit that where exactly the cargo is, is should be classified and he will also factor the details of the packing lists to arrive at a fruitful decisions so, so as to safeguard the revenue interest of government of India. First step. Dear friends, second step is a FTP compliance. We have previously understood in various modules of Niryat Bandhu wherein we have understood that DGFT frames the trade policy of India which can be a item can be either freely importable or restricted for import or can be imported through state trading enterprise which is a canalized item or prohibited item in addition to that there may be a quota regime or in, in uh, price caps which may be imposed so as to ensure that uh, equilibrium and demand and supply those are the measures which are taken by DGFT in the national interest dear friends these decisions may be for both export and import wide schedule one it is for import wide schedule two it is for exports so under schedule one of import policy specific decision of the dgft which which whether item is free or restricted or prohibited or state trading enterprise or under quota regime or under price cap that that indian customs has to adhere to in addition to that there may be some policy guidelines general policy guidelines which specify what are the various other provisions which a, 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 in, in Indian customs has to factor uh, in order to ensure the adherence to various other legislation which may be related to various other acts which are passed by by parliament dear friends third step which Indian customs takes is a preventive action when we say preventive action custom call it as a CCR custom compliance requirement what is that for example uh, you are importing a items which is uh, which has compliance of wildlife act let you are importing for example leather now leather in India may require a compliance with which wildlife crime control bureau or in addition to that wildlife act 1972 in addition to that other legislation may also come into picture you are importing a food item let us take an assumption you are importing a food item then food safety standard authority of India legislation may come into picture in addition to that you are importing a car automotive research association of india pune they have framed guideline or vehicle research there are dedicated uh, research facilities for vehicle research in india and similar fashion if you are importing a helmet a bureau of indian standard or you are importing a jewelry a bureau of indian standard hallmark standard so in india para 2.03 of the dgft of the foreign trade policy chapter 2 which specify that import that all domestic rules and regulations circular directives guidelines legislation acts and other you say orders of government of india or of dgft will mutatis mutandis apply on import transactions unless otherwise exempted so next step is duty calculation which customs has to undertake and under, under duty calculations it is done electronically online so dear friends we have to go to a as i have explained earlier also let me explain you once again we go on google we type uh, www.cbic.gov.in when we 
open a, a particular website opens on the left corner we see for example as you can see on your uh, screen also we click on custom duty calculator when we click on custom duty calculator a database electronic database edi database open sub it is known as icegate.gov.in on which there is a trade guide for imports when we click on trade guides for imports dear friends uh, it asks for specific details about what uh, what is a custom tariff heading cth so we put our hs code for the cargo which we are importing and then the complete detail which which complete duty structures complete requirement for ccr which is a custom compliance requirement and various kind of notifications exemptions and benefits which we can avail each provided on the database itself dear friends duties in import can be of the following types duties are defined on three broad parameters number one duties are on the basis of purpose when we say duties are on the basis of purpose there are two type of duty revenue duty which are usually lower rate of duty seven and a half percent ten percent basic custom duty is defined as a revenue duty sometimes duties are very high purpose is to protect the domestic economy or to discourage the import and such duties are known as prohibitive in nature for example luxury car when you import luxury cars in india duty is as high as 125 percent wheat since we have to protect our agriculture farmer duty is 100 percent because we have huge productions of wheat we have to first protect our farmer so we keep a very high rate of duty similar fashion there are certain items which are used by rich people is french scent if you are importing a french scent duty will be high and if you are importing for example olives fresh olives duty will be high because these are the items which are usually used by the rich people so rich should pay more poor should pay less that's the fundamental parameter that we that the customs and indian government in order to become a welfare state keeps in mind dear friends then duties are on the basis of imposition two type of duties number one duty is known as ad valorem on the basis of value second is specific duty sometime it become tough for indian customs to assess the value of the cargo or to decide whether uh, uh, sometimes prices goes up prices goes down cargo is speculative in nature cargo may have a perceived value so customs in those circumstances try to impose specific duty so as to safeguard the revenue interest of government of india third type of duties are known as a protective duties these uh, these are provided in order to protect the domestic industries which are number one can be countervailing duty for example igst levy in india is known as countervailing duty is it is imposed why because there is a general convention that goods are exported taxes are not so exporter for example exporter is based in singapore he is exporting from singapore there is no tax which is will be charged by government of singapore on exporter but the same kind of goods of the same quality of the same price with the same same kind of standards which which compliance if it is manufactured by indian person he will for example both of them are producing a particular item at 100 dollar and indian a uh, manufacturer will pay gst which will make his product expensive as a result he will not be able to sell to any prospective clients so in order to counterbalance such kind of behavior such kind of mal practices indian customs charge igst levy which is known as a countervailing duty so dear friends second is anti dumping for example there are certain of car certain type of cargo which are dumped by suppliers in order to create a market distortion to gain more market share to create you say so as to destroy the local industry to bleed the local industry and to kill them and there are several examples so subsequently a, a specific body known as a director general of trade remedies is created to look into such kind of issues where there is a malafide intent of of foreign suppliers to you know to bleed indian industry and to make it uh, to gain more market shares and eventually win indian market for the long run so government of india discourage such kind of behavior and if such kind of tendencies are found anti dumping duties are charged we are the intention is to cause the injury, injury to the domestic industry dear friends in addition to that there is a safeguard duty which pro, under under wto agreements there is a specific mechanism specific procedures under which the industry can be can also be protected by imposing safeguard duty so these are the various kind of duties which an exporter has to take has to factor so this these are known as you can see on on online it can be known as a basic custom duty plus igst levy plus there may be anti dumping or there may be for example safeguard duty on on specific products not on every products 
In addition to that, that dear friends, there is a cess. Now, what is this concept of cess? Uh, for example, there is a cess uh, for environment protection. And in addition to that, there is a social welfare surcharge, which is charged by government of India. And the purpose is to create a welfare uh, for the vulnerable sections of the society to improve governance in the country. That's, that's the whole objective. Dear friends, now this, uh, mm, uh, uh, what, we, what we call as this, uh, um, uh, this success is a specific creations of a pool where the funds go for a specific purpose will be used for that specific purpose. For example, some year ago there was a which was subse subsequently subsumed into social welfare surcharge. This was known as a primary education cess. So purpose was to educate Indian children up to the age of 14 which had become their fundamental right. Government collect certain cess which will be used in order to uh, educate Indian children and this money will be only used for primary education. Similarly, there was a secondary education cess. So cess is a special creation of pool which will be the funds so generated will be utilized for that specific purpose only. Once this is done, another person will audit the, car, the whole detail and uh, then uh, you, importer will go to bank, will pay the duties. If the value of the duties are higher, there are specific guidelines, file will go again to assistant commissioner. Now there may be a hierarchy of officers, for example, duty is 1 crore rupee, file may go to assistant commissioner, double, uh, deputy commissioner, then joint commissioner and may go to even up to the stage of principal commissioners depending on what are the revenue interest and if there, there should not be any compromise which, which the revenue interest of government of India. Once all this is done, goods goes to green channel, uh, electronically now a gate pass, e-gate pass, there is a concept. If if you type on Google e-gate pass, the concept of e-gate pass has been introduced. Now mobile applications has also come. You can download it from Google Play stores. In addition to that, there are there are, you say, specific, you say, uh, software which are being developed. You can do it electronically by using internet on your laptop. And electronic gate pass is issued. You count your cargo, go to shed appraiser, get your cargo checked and if your cargo is intact, full and final, you find whatever you imported as per documentary evidence, goods are declared out of charge, you can take them and bring to your factory, to your shop, to your market or to your warehouse, wherever you want to use it for the purpose of your subsequent commercial transaction. Sometime cargo may be in short, it may be a short shipment, it may be due to pilferage, it may be, uh, it may be due to theft, it may be because cause of some stealing something like that and there are four sections which I would like to discuss these are number one section 13 which talks talks about when goods are pilfered and section 21 which are which define custom sector 1962 define as a float sum jet sum derelict wreckage so this these are the four terms which they use for example a vessel is coming it has some container on board so they fall on the sea intentionally or unintentionally in order to safeguard the use in a smooth navigation so the vessel sometime captain do so sometime it happens by circumstances such a cargo is recollected and it is brought usually the salvage value of the cargo will be less in that case you say you will be entitled to pay lower rate of duty and in case of goods are pilfered whatever duty you have paid your duty will be refunded because cargo does not exist so survey report so you will file lodge a protest a insurance underwriter will come then indian customs terminal uh, a person from a particular terminal of customs and also from port and from shipping line they will sit and they will do the survey of the cargo based on survey they will write a report and if it, it is proven by underwriter report or insurance underwriter report that the cargo is pilfered and importer is entitled number one exemption or refund of payment of duty which he has already paid plus insurance claim for the lost cargo from the insurance company similar fashion section 22 is for deteriorated cargo and section 23 is for damaged cargo this will be done under the instructions of the inspector uh, shared appraiser will give the file to inspector and inspector will do the necessary uh, notings and accordingly decisions which is arrived on the basis of discussions and on the basis of uh, underwriter report insurance underwriter report will be communicated to an importer so this is whole cycle of of import clearance my dear friends if we follow this cycle this flow chart we will be able to smoothly clear our cargo now let me move towards uh, export clearance dear friends once you have understood uh, import clearance uh, export clearance is far more 
Easy to understand reason being that the steps involved because you know about the flowchart similar kind of flowchart will also be there for export clearance for example there is a exporter who want to export his cargo he will appoint a CHA or a custom broker or custom house agent who will go to service center so what is service center we have discussed these are the kiosks which are within the custom house where systems are there so they will open a database electronically known as ice gate so on which they will file a document called shipping bill there are five type of shipping bill if cargo is going for exhibition trade fair or some buyer seller meets or some for temporary show eh, and or some for cultural event eh, cargo will is a temporary export cargo will go cargo will come back an exporter usually file an ata carnet with in with FICI and which is a sole national issuing and guaranteeing association although dgft also issues but only in case of certain government of india obligations or some some sports events dgft has also been authorized but usually 99 percent cases it is done by FICI. FICI issue you ata carnet then your cargo is is go abroad for the purpose of trade fair exhibition or something like that okay uh, only for the purpose of showcasing so as to win more buyers and to to gain more market share to participate in trade fair something like that and then cargo comes back so cargo go cargo comes back so you are not entitled to any export incentive benefit you need not to realize your payment dear friends purpose is very simple cargo is a temporary export second type of shipping bill is under claim of duty drawback for example you import some cargo on which you have suffered some custom duty on imports which you used in your exportable product now you want to get refund want to give, wish to get refund of that custom duty which you have already paid for because there are two type of duty which may happen in any manufacturing activity one is a gst which is far more reformed where you can uh, avail the input tax credit set offs are available so you can leave you can utilize that again set off or uh, you can you can avail the input tax credit of the debt dear friends in case of customs no set offs are available so you have to suffer some incidence of duty which you have to pay on your imported inputs which will be utilized in the exportable product you are entitled to duty drawback specific discussion on duty drawback has already been done two type of drawback section 74 section 75 of the customs act 1962 we have already discussed in our previous module dear friends in addition to that there is a third type of duty drawback certain dutyable items so some 50 item out of some 11,800 tariff lines which exist almost 11,700 tariff line which exist in India some around 50 items on which government of India charge export duty also so you have to pay export duty and in that case you have to file dutyable shipping bill duty free shipping bill fifth four, four type of shipping bill and last type of shipping bill is a duty free X bond this duty free X bond is used when your cargo is exported out of EOU ESTP BTP STPI uh, when uh, 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 export transaction take place place from a bonded area bonded under section 65 and section section 57 of the customs act manufacturing bond operations we usually call them manufacturing bond operations these are eou ehtp btp stpi from where if export take place usually this is a bonded area so you will export your cargo so similar fashion a checklist will be generated uh, where in your uh, detail of your your uh, shipping bill must match with egm each image file 14 days in advance by a uh, by shipping line a specific allotment of of shipping number number is done cargo go to deec which is a duty entitlement and exemption certificate there are certain licenses which are issued by dgft if these are entitlement which may be under meis scheme or under seis scheme although meis scheme is likely to be phased out very soon and already partial phasing out has been done so dear friends entitlement may be in terms of duty credit script or exemptions in terms of for example advance authorization or uh, duty free import authorization or it can be uh, for example epcg export promotion capital goods schemes so that specific endorsement from a superintendent of customs you have to take then if that endorsement is done your cargo is registered uh, is, is usually registered for exports and if it it it, it crossed a certain threshold in terms of for example fob value or 
ड्यूटी ड्रॉबैक और नेट नेट पॉजिटिव फॉरन एक्सचेंज इन इन इंडिया देन इट विल गो सेम काइंड ऑफ एवरेजिंग वे फोर फाइव स्टेप्स विल बी इन्वॉल्व दो फाइव स्टेप्स आर नंबर वन क्लासीफाई द कार्गो एज वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इन केस ऑफ इम्पोर्ट क्लियरेंस प्रॉपरली क्लासीफाई द कार्गो एफ टी पी कंप्लाइंस सेम फ्री कार्गो इज फ्रीली एक्सपोर्टेबल इफ इट इज रिस्ट्रिक्टेड स्पेशल एक्सपोर्ट लाइसेंस इज रिक्वायर्ड इफ इट इज ए कैनलाइज आइटम इट मस्ट भी एक्सपोर्टेड बाई कैनलाइजिंग एजेंसी अदरवाइज एन ओ सी फ्रॉम कैनलाइजिंग एजेंसी इज रिक्वायर्ड एंड प्रोहिबिटेड आइटम कैन नेवर भी एक्सपोर्टेड डियर फ्रेंड्स इन एडिशन टू दैट देर इज ए प्रिवेंटिव एक्शन सेम एक्शन सी सी आर दैट इज ए कस्टम कंप्लायंस रिक्वायरमेंट देन देर आर इंसेंटिव कैलकुलेशन सो इन केस ऑफ इम्पोर्ट इट इज ए ड्यूटी कैलकुलेशन नाउ इट इज ए वट वी कॉल एज 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 ए इंसेंटिव कैलकुलेशन एंड देन योर कार्गो इज गिवन टू इंस्पेक्टर वेरी फ्यू केसेस मे बी टेन टू फिफ्टीन परसेंट ऑफ द केसेस कार्गो इज इंस्पेक्टेड कार्गो इज चेक एंड दैट इवन इज बेस्ड ऑन रिस्क मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम आर एम एस सिस्टम वेन देर आर स्पेसिफिक डिटेल्स of some gross violation by an 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 exporter or it is going to certain country it is a specific certain kind of cargo or some other such previous details for which a specific you say entries are made by indian customs in rms system based on that certain cargoes are inspected uh, and and that will be examined otherwise leo is given leo is let export order and my respected friend here i would like to mention three sections very importantly these are section 39 40 and 41 so egm is filed under section 41 of the customs act export general manifest and section 40 say nothing can be loaded on the vessel unless cleared by indian customs so you cannot load your cargo on a vessel unless your cargo is cleared by indian customs so that is a leo order which is a let export order you cannot clear and section 39 say exit outward so exit outward is filed under section 39 so this is a brief detail about various precautions which one can take or various you say various uh, stages which one has to follow which which export and import clearance of cargo should you find any additional problem please be in touch with us so dear friends we have today discussed the various stages steps which are involved in order to clear the import cargo into india we have understood well understood that how bill of entry is filed what are the various types of bill of entry how checklist is generated and uh, various kind of duties which an importer has to pay at the time of import clearance of cargo similar fashion we have also understood various stages and steps involved to clear the export cargo wherein we started our journey from filing of shipping bill electronic filing of shipping bill at ice gate we understood that there are 259 facilities where electronic clearance of of cargo both for export and import take place and now various involved steps for example electronic filing of of documents through e sanchi schemes and how you say electronically you can pay your duties how electronically your gate pass is generated by customs so these are the issues which we have appraised and assessed today i hope that you will enjoy this sessions and if you feel any additional requirement please be in touch with us we will provide you additional material with these words i thanks each one of you for your participation thank you very much